Hi, my name is Brian English, Wappler Forum name Hyperbytes, and this is a standalone module to cover the concept of responsive programming. I've had a lot of people approach me, ask me how to uh, set column widths, etc., to work correctly within uh, different devices, and uh, I thought I'd put this tutorial together just for people to be able to have a, a simple primer on how to do that. Before we start, I just want to bring your attention to these icons up at the top here because they are very important for what we're doing because that describes the different devices that we are dealing with. And those sizes are set within the bootstrap definition and I'm not suggesting at this stage that you consider changing any of them. So we start with a, a full-size screen. In other words, it assumes it has an unlimited space. Then we have our large screen monitors, our standard monitor, our laptop, our tablet, our mobile phone in landscape, and lastly, our mobile phone in portrait mode. And what we need to do is look to create a design which will cater for all of those different types of device. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to create a container. And I'm just going to make that a fluid container so that covers the entire width of the screen. And you'll see that has been allocated a class of container fluid. And I'm going to be referring to these class definitions regularly just so you can see exactly how Wapner deals with the um, definition of these uh, different column sizes. So row straightforward, class over row. And then lastly, we have a column. And again, we just have a class of column. So it's defining class of column. It is not saying how big that column should be. Therefore, it will default to full width. Um, as you know, the uh, bootstrap definition, definition is 12 columns. So uh, it will go 12 columns wide. And if we were to duplicate that, what you'll see is that it will automatically calculate that each column needs to be six in size to match the two different um, columns to complete to that full 12. We haven't actually told it column 6 or width 6. It has assumed that itself and made those two the same size. If again we would duplicate again, you'll see it will automatically go, okay, I've got three columns here. Um, I've got 12 columns width, so let's just make them four columns wide. So how do we do that through Wappler? Um, well, first of all, we'll just take those extra columns out. And I'm going to add into that column a heading. We'll just say hello. And I'm going to add after that a image. pop an image in there. Now, that image at the moment will display at the size of which it's been saved onto the um, the system itself. So we need that to scale to fit our column and it's very easy to do. We just click the responsive button and that will then automatically scale to the size of the column. At the moment it's full width of the screen so it's quite happy with it being the size it is. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to duplicate that and you'll see how that automatically scales. And I'm just going to go down to, I'll make six columns, I think. So there we are, six identical columns at the moment. And that is in our full size mode. What we need to do now is look at how we can deal with the different devices. Because if we work down, we'll see, yeah, that's not too bad on a wide screen. It's acceptable probably on a normal it's probably okay on a laptop-ish. Once we get down to tablets and to um, mobile phones, you'll see that now it says, no, this is ridiculous. We can't fit in here. Um, and it will start to move things around randomly. And you can see these images are so small that realistically that you, you can't see what they are. You wouldn't want that in a final product. So what we're going to do is teach the system how we want this to be viewed in each particular 
um, device. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing that from two places. We're going to be doing it within the columns themselves visually. So we're going to be dragging columns around like this. But also I want to show you the effect of your spacing in the bottom here. And that's really important that we examine what happens within this class definition of column while we're doing that. So at the moment that has no class definition at all other than it is a column. I want to first of all just show you what would happen if we put a bit of let's say top margin in there a little bit of bottom margin and a tiny bit of padding and if we go back up now you'll see that we've got column margin top three margin bottom one padding top one so as we do that basically the graphic drag and drop here actually just pushes these classes into that class statement there so it becomes quite easy to um, change that and that at the moment is generic you'll see there is no mention of any devices at all um, that is a generic setting right across all of your different devices but that's not actually what we want so I'm going to take that out now and you can either take it out on the graphic below or you can just simply take out those class statements and if you do that and then scroll back down to the visual side you'll see it's disappeared out of there as well because the two obviously are interlinked so when you're doing responsive programming the rule is you always do mobile first so you start with the lowest resolution and you define what you want within that and then you work up the resolutions and each time you want to change a breakpoint you have to define a new class so we're going to start with a mobile phone and what we want to do first of all is say well how big do we want those mobile phone columns to be and what I actually want to do is I want to make that full width because that would be much much better to look at so we can literally just drag each of these as we want them to the size we want or alternatively if they're all going to be the same you could actually just copy and paste that column statement in just like that to repl replicate that and down we go with the different sizes as we go through them make sure that you are clicked on the column element not the heading or the image otherwise you won't see these scroll bars um, and obviously they are very important because you can't scroll it accordingly so there we are we have now 12 different columns and if we look at each of them we can see they have different they have the same definition they have a col 12 definition and that is the base definition that everything will work with also let's just for the sake of it put a little bit of top margin and sorry yeah and bottom padding I only want to do that so you can see what happens within the definition up here you can see now that we have column 12 margin top 3 and your padding bottom 1 but if all these settings are responsive so if we now go into our mobile landscape we might feel oh well perhaps first of all I think we could probably get away with two images in there so we can actually scale that and that should now say you say column small device 6 and we can do the same with this column small device 6 you see as it hits the right size 6 and 6 is 12 it will then set that correctly and again we'll just go through those columns now and we'll set the width this is why I only did 6 because if we'd done the full 12 uh, would have been here all day and also you can actually set the top and bottom 
the padding I should say in margins at a responsive level so on this particular device I actually want this whacking big five um, margin on the top and I want a padding of three so now we can see that we what it says is as a base let's see if I can scroll this out a little as a base well, I'm just trying to get it so we can get the maximum spacing there. No, it's not going to give us any more. At the base, we've got a column of 12, got a margin top of 3, and a padding at the bottom of 1. Unless it is greater than column small, therefore it becomes 6, and 5, and 3. And we can push that right through all of the different screens let's say we'll maybe leave it. I'm not going to adjust each of these with the tops and bottom margins we'll perhaps say well actually that's not bad for tablet but on a laptop I really think we can probably go a bit smaller so we'll go to four there you see now that we've got our don't forget I've only applied that top margin etc to that one column and it will continue right the way through all of the different sizes until we rede redefine it so we decided that this particular setting we wanted to get rid of that margin let's say then we can literally just remove it from the uh, the definition you see that, that, that that's now moved to where it originally was because we redefined that top margin and that uh, top padding. We'll now go on to a, a bigger computer. And yeah, I think we can get away with now four columns on there. So again, we can now go to our columns and we can just drop the, each one of these down by one. And this way now on this device... We now see that we've got four images shown. Each one is now defined by, you can see there, empty, large, page, large, etc. And so we can do that with each of our different screens. Let's say we want to go even bigger on this one. So it is a bit fiddly, you've got to make sure that you continue to get the column selected when you're doing this. And you can add more and more. And the, really the important bit that I want to show you here is, if I go into code view, is this statement here. And this is what we built. So you, you, you've got your, col your column at 12, your margin top, your padding bottom. Then you've redefined that column width depending on the device, whether it be small, whether it be medium, whether it be large, whether it be extra large. And those, those columns are set correctly. And I appreciate these aren't the same because I didn't reset every column to exactly as it should be. So what you see is that you, you will never get a repeat as such of a, a column unless uh, each time you redefine it will overwrite the old settings so you, you keep a nice setting. And that means now that when you uh, are looking at your device, your, your sizes, you'll see that goes to 1, then that goes to 2, and then that goes to 3. And if you remember, we actually redefined the top and bottom margins at that point, so that disappears. And then at the large ones in there. So that's basically what the uh, how to design your responsive columns within Wappler uh, using the Bootstrap format. And I hope that clears up a bit of the um, ambiguity or concerns with users regarding how they actually do this and what what they need to do to be able to make their um, web pages display properly across different devices. 
Um, so I hope this has been useful for you. Um, I hope to do a few more standalone modules like this in the very near future to show you how to uh, do use some of the techniques within Wappler um, rather than being as part of the uh, primary course that I'm dealing with now. So thanks for joining me and uh, hopefully you'll join me again soon for another module.